Hello, and welcome to the first installment of my costume making walkthrough. I'm playing Professor Opal Hyden of the 2015 Metricon mascots, and these videos will be following the planning and creation of my cosplay, somewhat similar to the cosplay documentary I started called NPCs of Cosplay. The techniques I'm teaching here are things I've learned in the past eight years I've been making costumes, and I hope they'll be helpful to you the next time you sit down to make an outfit. I'm completely self-taught, so there are probably better ways to go about doing some of the things I do, but these are techniques that work for me. Who knows, maybe some of you guys out there can comment tips for me as well. So let's get to it. In this first video, I'll be talking about patterns and mock-ups, the very first stages of costume making. Since this costume is unique in design, I'll be doing the whole thing from scratch. No, not that kind of scratch. No, not that kind. Oh, whatever. As you can imagine, this entails a lot of work, but there's no better way to get a custom design, custom fit cosplay. We'll take it step by step, and hopefully the whole process won't seem so daunting. The first thing you want to do is take your measurements. Depending on what you're making, you may need more or less than what I took for this project. Opal has several layers of clothes covering almost all her body. Oh boy, time to find some wickaway fabric so I don't die of heat stroke at the con. So I ended up recording about 30 different numbers. That's right, you're gonna need a heck of a lot more than just chest, waist, hips if you want a well-customized outfit. Make sure to pay attention to not just how big the parts are around, but also to how far apart they are from one another. The more data you have on the dimensions of your body, the easier it'll be to create your pattern. If you're wearing a specific style undergarment to change the size of your body for the character, then make sure to wear it while you're taking your measurements. Lots of data won't be much help if it isn't accurate. When you start your pattern, make sure to use good paper. My preference is rolls of medical table paper. They're made body width and translucent, so if you use a cutting mat like I do, you can see the measuring grid through the paper. Very helpful. You can order that online at Staples and other paper companies. Unfortunately, when I made my pattern, I was completely out of that paper and had to settle for a roll of poster paper from Walmart. Sturdier, sure, but it wasn't as wide and lacked that translucent quality that makes the other paper my favorite. Also, make sure you have the right tools. I use a cutting mat, pencil, scotch tape, scissors, a dressmaker's tape, straight edge, and more recently, a fancy curved ruler, which I didn't own at the time of making this pattern. Check out a Joanne or similar store and you'll see all kinds of useful tools for patterns and alterations. But in the beginning of my cosplay career, all I had was my dressmaker's tape and the floor, so don't think it's absolutely necessary to have lots of expensive accoutrement in order to sew from scratch. Those are just things that make your life a little bit easier. The only things I'd say are absolutely necessary are the dressmaker's tape, pencil, scotch tape, scissors, and paper. Everything else is just gravy. Now, before you even bring that pencil to paper, make sure you have a solid idea of what pieces will comprise your outfit and how they will go together. Dig through your closet and look at any clothes similar to the ones you'll be making. Go to a thrift store and buy something that fits. Cut it apart and use that as a cheat sheet. Anything that will help you visualize what these pieces are going to be. Get as many reference pictures of your character from all angles as possible. You'd be surprised at the little details that can change from shot to shot of a character. In my case, I have one official image to use, as well as a rough sketch with a couple of notes on it. So it was necessary for me to think a little outside of the box on some of it. I always strive to be as close to screen accurate as I can, and this is no exception. Without a concrete image of Opal from the back or without her coat, I found it very useful to make rough, really rough, sketches of my own. I decided on how many pieces I needed per layer, as well as how they attached, and then I was able to begin drawing. I like to start with the innermost layer and then build up from there. So first it was the pants. Along with the stripe down the side, you'll notice she has a little bell-bottom flare that ends in a poof close to the ankle. Simple enough, and I'll give you some tips that help make patterning easier. First of all, I always, always start with the midpoint. Mark the midpoint of your paper and run your measurements off of that. Most of them will center here with a few exceptions. Starting this way will help you keep your pattern balanced and, when necessary, symmetrical. Next, when you calculate what your measurements will be, always account for seam allowance and hems. Personally, I use a quarter inch seam allowance and leave around an inch for my basic hems. A lot of commercial patterns include a 5 eighths inch seam allowance, but it's really up to you. Just be consistent. When I first started, I lacked confidence, so I left lots of extra allowance in my patterns, but had to remember to bring it in when I sewed the fabric. Do whatever makes you happy. The next tip is not to worry about going off the edge of the paper or making alterations while you work. The scotch tape is quite handy in sticking more paper to itself to give you the canvas you need. Don't be afraid to cut and redo sections of your patterns. It's okay. Paper doesn't feel pain. If you are creating a piece that would be symmetrical, such as my jacket sleeve or back, it'll save you some time and headache to simply fold the piece in half along the midpoint and pattern out one side, then cut. Symmetry achieved. The last important tip I've got for you before we get started on the pants is this. Square your corners. Not following? Well, this is what I mean. When you get to a point in your pattern where you'll be sewing a corner to another, make sure that it's at a 90 degree angle. This will help your fabric hang properly and come together smoothly. 
If you're coming in at a curve toward the corner, simply even it out and adjust it into a right angle. It takes very little time and effort and will really go a ways to improving the look of your cosplay. As far as pants go, the ones I'll be making are the simplest. I'll be attaching elastic to the waistband to make them stretchy and comfortable, and I may or may not add pockets, depending on how I feel. For now, I'm simply making a two-piece pattern that will give me the front and back of my pants. The important thing to note here is when making pants, you need more space in the back for your butt than you do in the front. Make sure to increase the crotch in the back so you can comfortably sit down in the pants. Otherwise, if you're just making a simple pair of pants like these, no zippers, no buttons, they really aren't difficult at all. Calculate your measurements according to your pieces, and the whole thing should come together really nicely. For example, the waistband will be in four different pieces once it's cut out, so I take that body measurement and divide it by four to get the pattern measurement. Don't forget to add seam allowance to each side. The individual legs are in two pieces, front and back, so those circumference body measurements are divided by two, then add seam allowance. Don't get flustered by all the numbers. If you make a mistake, it's very easy to fix, and you won't be cutting into the expensive fabric until your pattern is just right, so don't be scared to make those mistakes. The next thing I put together is her shirt. In the notes it says that the black top and white bottoms are connected and that there are four white pieces all around. I see buttons on the white, but the gold trim covers the connection at the top, so I deduce that there are more buttons up there, they just have a strip of fabric covering them. So now when I pattern the front, I not only need to account for seam allowance, but also the inch overlap where the buttons and buttonholes will be placed. The top is a sleeveless vest, so I only have to pattern armholes, which I'll talk about in more detail when I get to the jacket. For now, I simply make a little sketch to decide what the trim looks like on the back and how many pieces I need to pattern, then apply the exact same skills I explained when I made the pants. Midpoint. Calculate measurements, rinse, repeat. Finally, the jacket. This is a little more complicated. Now we have sleeves to worry about, and her coattails have a flare that Seto Kaiba would envy. Well, in order to achieve that flare, it's going to take some effort, but the first step is to pattern in the extra fabric. Cutting along the bias of your fabric, aka diagonally, will help encourage flare, so when I pattern this, I make it asymmetrical, with the sides flying outward much more dramatically than the front or back seams. As for the sleeves and armholes, those suckers can be a little tricky. It will really help to look at existing clothes and patterns to get an idea of how they're drawn. After all, you're turning something 2D into a curved 3D object, and that can be confusing. For armholes, just remember that the front of your clothes needs a larger hole than the back so that you can move your shoulders forward. When you lay the pattern pieces over one another, you should be able to see the back pattern piece at the armhole. If you have one of these nifty curved rulers, they help a lot when drawing and altering sleeves and armholes. My sleeve is a cap style, so it will all be one piece. This is the most common style sleeve, and they look kind of funny in paper. It would take me a while to talk about the intricacies of sleeve patterning, but just remember what the basic shape should be and how it goes together. Seriously, cut up a shirt that fits you comfortably and look at that sleeve. The visual reference really helps. Once you've got your basic pattern, it's time to A. Make the costume! No time for anything else! The con is tomorrow! B. Just tape the paper pattern to yourself and call it a day. It's ironic commentary on the cosplay culture, and only cool people will understand anyway. <sighs> or C. Look at fabric in the store, and then go find a cheaper hobby. Um, actually, none of these. The answer is D. Make a muslin. N no. No, I said muslin. It's a mock-up of your costume made from super cheap fabric that is also called muslin. Hmm. Kinda confusing there, guys. Let's stick to better naming conventions next time, okay? The muslin fabric comes in different weights, and while you should aim to match the type of fabric you'll be using in the final product, I always buy the really cheap stuff. Talking dollar a yard kind of stuff. I go through a lot of muslin every year, even when I reuse it. The idea for this step is to cut out and sew together a mock-up in order to test the fit of your costume before you go cutting into the good stuff. This will clue you into any alterations that are going to be necessary. You'd be surprised how different a pattern can look when it's laying flat on the floor versus hanging off of your body. When I make my alterations, I have two methods. If it's something simple, like the waist needs to come in an inch, I'll make the alteration directly to the paper pattern. If it's a little more complicated, like an armhole, I'll mark and cut the muslin until it feels comfortable, then pull it apart and copy the changes onto the paper pattern. Both are effective, and you can decide what you prefer. Don't forget to square your corners if the angle changes. Please note that when I sew together a muslin, I'm only basting it, which means I'm using the widest straight stitch my machine makes. That way, I can rip the pieces apart easily without tearing the fabric, and I use less thread in time. After alterations have been made to each piece, it's important, especially if you're new to this or lack confidence, to make your muslin again with the alterations. That way you can be absolutely certain that your pattern is comfortable and you won't be wasting fabric. Do this as many times as you need, and by the time you get to the real stuff, things will go a lot quicker. Trust me. 
Now, if you're fancy and own a dress form, that'll make the process a little easier, but honestly, even though I have one, I usually only use it for commissions. My body is way more nuanced than the customization level of the dress form, and since I'm always around, I just try on my mock-ups. Using the draping method for patterning is a whole different story, and that's another costume in another video. For now, let's stick with what we've got. You can see my patterns have some alterations between the initial and final designs, but they're still basically the same. Back when I was first learning how to pattern, I'd go through much more drastic alterations, so don't feel bad if yours requires a lot more changes. My jacket took the most work because I decided to change the way it hung once I saw the muslin. You'll notice a few details I've left out, like pockets, collars, and trim. I'll get to that later. For now, I've got a great start for this new costume. I hope you guys enjoyed my first video detailing my cosplay progress and that it was fun and informative. In the next video, I'll be tackling fabric purchasing and treatment as well as some finer details. Is there something you'd like to see in the future or something you want me to clarify? Do you have any tips to give me? Leave a comment, I'd love to follow up on it. If you're interested in more of what I do, please check out Clever Disguises. We're on YouTube, Facebook, and Tumblr. The final and most important piece of advice I'll leave for you is this. Don't be afraid of your project. It's okay to experiment and mess up. Don't ever let the fear of failure stop you from trying. Cosplay can be stressful sometimes, but it's supposed to be fun. If you take anything away from this video, make it that. All right, that's it for this one. I'll see you in the next video where we talk fabrics.